Welcome to class nine, um, another online course. And today we'll be exploring um, one of the articles we read um, called uh, Mirrors and Windows um, to uh, Multicultural Literature. And then also we'll be discussing um, chapter six from the Children's Literature in the Classroom book. So let's start with our Mirrors and Windows article. And um, you're going to be posting on the discussion board kind of what stood out to you the most in this article. Um, what do you feel the danger is of a single story? And then how you can incorporate the information you gained from this article into your current teaching situation. Um, you might also reflect on, um, you know, doing a little bit of an audit of the literature that is available in your classroom and think about um, do you have a single story or do you represent multiple stories um, so that we're not um, perpetuating that single story episode. Next, um, we're going to go ahead and explore some of the pieces of Chapter 6, um, and that's exploring the qualities of visual representation. And we're going to look specifically at a couple of examples, and um, I'll kind of talk to you about what you're supposed to post um, accordingly. So the first one that I'd like to explore is the example of end papers, and it talked about the example. Of, um, it talked about end papers and text, and how they kind of enhance books. Um, so the sample here I've given you is um, Ezra Jack Keats' *The Snowy Day*, and I've included a photograph of um, the end papers used in that particular book. So how do you feel the end papers enhance this story? Um, and then I want you to find another book, um, possibly in your classroom library or even just in general, um, that has end papers and kind of post on the discussion board. Um, you can even post a picture if you'd like of those end papers and then talk ho about how those end papers um, enhance the story or prepare the reader for the story. Next, um, another piece that they talked about was framing, and one of my favorite framing stories is The Mitten, um, Jan Brett's. Um, and if you're not familiar with the story, I highly recommend um, you take a look at it. Um, this, I actually did this um, picture right, uh, right here with the frame from um, a YouTube where they were reading it. Um, but as you can see from this picture, um, in the center they have the main story going on, but then the frames on the side are separate stories. Um, the one as you're facing the picture, the one to the left, is following the boy and what's going on with the boy um, as he's lost his mitten and how he goes about his day. And then um, the frame on the right is kind of a predictive frame of what animal um, will be appearing next in the story. So I'd like to have you try to find an example of another book with um, some sort of framing um, and also post that example on the discussion board and really just talk about how does that enhance the story? How does that support the reader um, in reading the story? On page 132, um, there is a chart in your book that gives several illustrator um, websites. Um, and so I'd like for you to choose one or two of those websites um, and look at it from the lens of the visual literacy piece. Um, and I want to know what you find or discover and then post that on the discussion board. So you'll need to tell us which website you looked at and um, how that increased your knowledge of um, visual literacy. Um, the last thing I'd like to do um, around the topic of visual literacy is have you watch um, a video from students. And um, so um, in this website, um, or in this uh, PowerPoint, um, which is also posted under pages, there is a link, and I'll also post it on the PowerPoint. It's not posted at this point, but I will post it. And um, I want you to look, think about the lessons you learned from these high, these high school students that produced this video on um, the importance of visual literacy and how we're not using it in our classrooms. And so think about the lessons you've learned. It's about a 15 minute video, so allow yourself some time. And then think about how do those lessons and the information presented, how will that impact you in your classroom? 
The last piece I want to spend a little bit of time looking at our upcoming assignments. We really haven't had much for this class yet, but it's about to get busy. Um, so the first assignment that um, I'd like to look at is the um, using literature to support the teaching of writing. And so this is a picture of the rubric um, where for the assignment where you're going to talk about the rationale. Um, so basically you're going to choose a writing strategy that you can use some mentor text with to support um, teaching that writing strategy. Um, and so just, you know, give your rationale and your evidence of research that this is a good writing strategy. And then include um, any mentor text that you might use and the rationale and how you'll use that text then to support that strategy. And what I'd like to see is two writing lessons. Um, that really enhance the uh, the learning of that writing strategy. And just go ahead and use the uh, Maryville lesson plan um, for that. And again, it'll, it'll really be two lessons that you're using. Also, um, in order to support this, there is an article on Canvas under articles. Um, and you'll see it um, represented under children, underline book, underline write, underline skills. And that article is, it's about a three pager, not even three full pages, but it does give you some examples of some great mentor text and writing strategies that they support. So um, feel free not to reinvent the wheel, um, but to use one of those and develop your um, lessons around some of those if you, if you would like. Um, so again, that's under articles, um, and then child underscore book underscore write underscore skills. Um, and that assignment is going to be due on April 9th. So a little bit of time, but I just want you to kind of start thinking about it and possibly gathering resources. Um, while we're talking about assignments, we're just going to go ahead and go through the, um, the other two that we'll be working on. Um, we'll be spending a little bit more time um, on critical analysis, but that is going to be um, another um, assignment that's coming due on April 16th. Um, and there are checklists and articles, again, on Canvas. Um, under There is a critical analysis um, page that will help support that. And basically, you'll be choosing two different um, pieces of children's literature. And then you'll describe each piece of literature in light of either the critical literacy perspective or the critical multicultural analysis. So you can choose which one of those you would like to do. And then you're going to be doing a presentation in class in light of those two pieces. Um, and again, that is due on April 16th. And then the last and final assignment, of course, is our unit of study. So just kind of want you to be thinking about that. I know we've been talking about it in class, um, but um, again, just kind of um, to be working on that as that is due on um, April 30th. So um, we will definitely be discussing those assignments further um, next week um, so that if you have any questions, um, we can get those answered. And I want to make sure you feel confident with those. But just kind of wanted to bring those back to your attention. Um, you know, this is the last week of March, and April is just around the corner, and everything's due in April. So just want to make sure you're prepared um, and ready to go with some of those things and are kind of working through them. So um, next week, we'll be looking at children's literature, chapter two, we're jumping back a little bit, um, and we're really going to be focused on read alouds. So um, there are also two articles on Canvas under articles, effective read alouds, and read alouds in middle school. Um, and so I want you to really think about those, um, especially thinking about um, some of you will be out of your comfort zone a little bit in middle school and high school this summer, um, for those of you doing your practicum this summer the rest of you it will be the next summer. Um, so thinking about how possibly you might be able to utilize um, some of this knowledge to apply to those practicum experiences either this summer or next summer. So um, that's all I have for you this week. So post those great things on the discussion board and um, I look forward to seeing you next week. Have a great week.